Hey everyone, it's just a, a short video to update you on what's been happening. Uh, first of all, I have a huge pot of pasta sauce on the in the crock pot right now that's going. Hopefully that'll be done uh, before I go to bed, but then I'll just keep it warm all night um, and I'll share it with my neighbors. But I had gone grocery shopping and uh, they had these bags of summer squash on the reduced cart for, you know, it's like four for a dollar. So I, I took a couple, but you know, when you take them in there that uh, reduced, you know, you better use them right away. So I just uh, browned them up in the pan with some onions and mushrooms and threw them in the pot and put a couple jars of pasta sauce in there and we'll just let it go. So um, my eyes are still burning a little bit from the onions. Anyhow, so I want to talk about what I have been working on. And as I had said in a previous video, I was going to probably make a couple more of the Jada and Stitches calendar blankets. So I'm working on number three. And once again, I have the teal for the bottom, but then for this brown, which is actually rust, um, I had this old, I don't know if you can see it, let's see, sale yarn. And the uh, date on it's actually 1976. And my friend got this, she got one day um, like 42 skeins of yarn for me at the thrift store. Unfortunately, she way overpaid for them because this thrift store was a little pricey and they wanted a dollar a skein. And when I got them, I was like, you do realize some of these skeins only cost 87 cents to begin with. And, you know, they were old and just, but anyway, so I'm using this old sale. Um, and then for uh, this one, I'm going to make as a fall blanket. So I'm using purple, a couple shades of purple, and I've just started this first set of purple. And then I'll do a winter one. Um, and then I'm going to give the four that I've done to my next door neighbor for uh, four of her grandkids, which I had to be kind of careful that I didn't step on her grandmotherly toes, even though she and I are like really good friends. So uh, it wasn't really a problem, but I just want to be very careful um, because she had talked about how she wanted to make Afghans for all her grandchildren. She has 10. Not that I think she's going to actually do that, but I, I just thought, mm, I want to make four. So I, I said, I don't want to step on your toes, but do you mind if I give four of the grandkids uh, blankets and she was totally delighted so uh, one one she has three children and between those three children there are ten grandchildren so one of the one of her kids has four kids so that's the family that will get the Afghans um, okay so that's one thing I'm just barely working on that um, then let's see what else oh I'm working on another uh, little snowman but I hardly have anything done on him so I, I just work on that when I'm tired of working on the blanket for the day and then let's see what else um, I did finish this scarf as you can see I like to I actually like to put fringe on my scarf once again this purple just doesn't photograph purple it's showing up as blue. But anyways, um, so I've got this beautiful scarf, which I'll just give away to somebody. I don't know who. Uh, my projects usually tell me who they want to go to eventually. And then I haven't shown this because this is just a scrap scarf. So uh, just scrap yarn like this. This yarn right here is a Red Heart Ombre Spearmint. This was the last bit of this I had. I wasn't planning on buying more, so it just went into the scarf. So this is just something that gets worked on occasionally 
when I know I truly have a scrap of yarn. Um, okay, so uh, I wanted to talk about some tips because uh, somebody was starting a thread about uh, tips for crocheting and uh, I just have a few little ones. Uh, okay, where's this little guy? Okay. When you're making amigurumi and you have, say, a lot of, uh, oh, let's say you get up to 60 stitches in a row and then you have 10, 10 rows of that 60 stitches, you know, some people use a little um, counter, but that you can forget to push the counter. So what I do is, I don't see if you can see it, when I start those rows, what I do is I put this right like underneath the stitch so that anything on top of that, all the rows on top of that, I just count. And I know, say, I have 10 rows of, of this 60 to do, then I just count the rows and I don't need a little stitch counter or row counter or anything like that. Okay, so that's like one tip uh, that may be helpful or not. Another little tip is this is the, the calendar blanket I'm working on and there's 108 stitches per row. So every few rows I count just to make sure I'm not totally off. And so when I get to a, a row and it's like perfectly on target, then I just put a little stitch marker there just to say, okay, everything up to that row is still perfect. So that way, if, if you do have to frog, you know that you don't have to frog beyond that point. Um, but usually you can find your mistake anyways. Uh, there was another tip that I was going to share and what the in the world was that? Well, I'll have to think of it in another, in another video. Um, anyways, that's about it for this video. I hope it wasn't too boring. If you like the video, just hit the like button and please feel feel to uh, feel free to subscribe and push the little bell so that you get notifications of when I post a new video. And I will talk to you later. Bye bye.